Do you like chemistry? Do you want to pursue it as a research career? How? Haven't got any satisfactory answers yet? Let's find out from the researchers themselves. Not just that, let's feel as they feel it. Let's experience as they experience it. Let's see theoretical chemistry as they see it. My field being of theoretical nature is very broad. That means that opportunities arise over a broad spectrum of different applied sciences. For knowledge is at the basis of all human endeavors and nowhere do you get as much knowledge as when you do theoretical study of science. For instance, pharmaceutical industry is very re heavily reliant today upon theoretical investigations of ligand protein complex bindings because you have to screen a lot of uh, molecules for their pharmaceutical activity and that's just not doable wet chemically with uh, basic methods of chemistry. Other aspects in every aspect of chemistry are also directly related to the theoretical underpinnings that you, the undergirding so to speak, uh, of that you learn and acquire in a theoretical chemistry framework. For instance, catalysis and polymer industry. Not the least, I should also here mention the standard opportunities that you always have if you do well in science of a productive research career in academia. So, in general, in the application of computer simulations for modeling biological systems, um, this is something that is becoming more and more popular over the last probably decade in the whole scientific community. Um, so the, possibilities for, for an academic career in this specific research field are pretty large, but it's very competitive too. A lot of people are streaming into this field and um, it's very challenging to stay in this field, to obtain a permanent position at an institute, at a university, um, and it's actually relatively hard to work in the industry afterwards if you want to pursue and continue what you're doing. So most people that I know just out of this field who start working in the industry afterwards, they do something completely different, something that concerns with managing sales, something like that. But there are relatively few research positions in the industry that work with computers and do simulations. Um, and if they are, typically these things are outsourced into other smaller companies. So if you do simulations, if you do theoretical work and you want to continue doing this, you're basically stuck in academics and it's very tough. The economics in many countries are problems and science is one of those areas that fields the cuts and budgets basically the earliest. And um, so obtaining a permanent position is quite challenging and it takes a very long time. So most of the time you will not be able to get to a point where you know that you have a safe position for the rest of your scientific career until you're in your late thirties, maybe even forties. And this can be very severe if you don't make it. You always have to be aware of the possibility that there's a chance that you will have to switch subjects because at some point your funding runs out, you don't know what to do. And the older you are, the more difficult it is. But one of the most general messages that I repeated already a few times, if you really like what you do, uh, it's worth doing it. Just follow your dreams, follow your heart. And when you will have enough energy that you can go over all barriers and find your path. Uh, in fact, the field is quite uh, saturated. The opportunities are not much uh, awesome right now. Especially in Europe, you don't have many uh, positions open. It's relatively easy to, to get a PhD fellowship, to even to get postdoc uh, grants. That's not difficult you can get. But from there to a permanent position, it's very difficult, especially because uh, this is a field that's extremely academic. It's very difficult for uh, a, a doctor in the field to get a position in the industry. Different from when you get a PhD in, in, in a lab, you can move to the industry, but in computational chemistry it's very difficult. So the, the, the opportunities are very limited.
well if i tell you then interdisciplinary subjects are quite important during your curriculum the reason behind this is to some extent the education system is quite rigid like you cannot select everything you want at a time so during your curriculum you study some subjects which which you at a point might think that it will be non useful for you in the future but let me tell you every subject is equally important to start a research for example i did my masters in industrial chemistry okay and now i am doing a research in theoretical chemistry not exactly core theoretical chemistry but which which includes a part of theoretical chemistry where we need to simulate the system so you need to have the knowledge of computation computational uh, programming you need to have a knowledge of statistics you need to have a knowledge of mathematics now at that time during your study if you have thought that okay i'm studying mathematics and it's not important for me then suppose after 5 years if you opt a career which requires which calls or which demands the subjects like mathematics statistics and computer computational programming at that time it will be pretty difficult for you to start from the scratch and doing your research parallelly so this is my case is quite specific this is just one case but interdisciplinary subject is required in almost every field whether you study physics suppose in physics if you opt cosmology you need mathematics you need statistics even if you opt medical science you need you need statistics so interdisciplinary subjects are quite important whatever field you choose for your research work as i mentioned the specific field i'm working on is very interdisciplinary but um in general when you proceed in your scientific career you never work on just one subject you always collaborate with other people for us for example the computer simulations our computer simulations are almost worth nothing if we don't compare it to experiments and if we don't have an experimental validation so the fact you just don't blindly get data from some experimentalist that you then recalculate you need to actually understand the limitations of the possibilities of experiments and um therefore never specialize unless you have to so learn as much as you can from as many different fields as as you can you will never know everything and one of the most important messages actually that you cannot know everything and you have to be aware of that someone who says that he knows everything doesn't know much typically so um being broad not specializing too much unless you have to Um, there are always problems that need to be solved. That's when you have to specialize and you need to find the proper solution. But otherwise, stay open and look at what people, other people do. Look at other techniques, possibilities, experiments, and simulations, and try to be as broad as possible. I would say, um, in general, an underestimated um, soft skill is writing, because um, a very large portion of the life of a scientist is actually writing. Um, in our field specifically, it's pretty broad. We are very interdisciplinary. We are combining physics, chemistry, mathematics, computer science, all in one. So it's it's very broad. General knowledge of physics, chemistry, coding, writing software uh, is required. Um, statistical mechanics, thermodynamics, biology. You need to know what kind of systems you are studying. What are proteins? What are DNA? um what is their chemistry what what is their physics how do they behave and all of that is required to work in a specific field yeah as I, as i told you i am myself a physicist and that's very common to find in this field there are many physicists working in computational chemistry and at the same time you can find many biologists and even people from pharmacy working in computational chemistry so computational chemistry is uh, extremely flexible and interdisciplinary accepting people from from many different fields what you have in common of course is is the chemistry and the computation and you need is to be especially skilled with mathematics because you need a lot of uh, coding and algorithmic uh, developing algorithmic thinking to work in the field